Okay, so this is a question that I got from uh, a student named Nuf, uh, and the question is as follows. So you have this uh, compound here, and it has a C13 label uh, right over there, right? Um, and so it's asking which compound uh, would you form? Would you form, they're, they're both identical compounds, it's just where the C13 label is. Would you form the compound with the C13 label here or with the C13 label there, right? Um, and so I never actually learned this reaction when I was in undergrad, to be honest, and I'm not like an organic chemistry PhD uh, student, but um, I thought I'd give myself a swing at it. I looked it up, and it's actually a trick question, first of all, um, and you'll see why. Um, but second of all, um, it undergoes this mechanism called the Favorsky rearrangement, and this is actually a really cool mechanism, which is why I want to make a video out of it. Um, by the way, I hope everybody is safe during the all the shenanigans happening in the world with the coronavirus. There, um, I know I said I was going to upload more videos, but um, I had some stuff going on, so but I got a chance to do this one. Luckily, so this is what's going to happen. So you have your base, right? Which is uh, your ethoxide here, right? Now, the first thing is, now we know that, you know, these alpha hydrogens are acidic, and you have a few options here. Um, now, the base is actually going to attack this alpha hydrogen first, right? Um, and it's, that's the only alpha hydrogen actually it's going to attack. Um, and the reason is because uh, I believe um, there's steric hindrance from the bromine, but also the, the these alpha hydrogens are a little bit more... Uh, positive than this one um, so there's that so you're gonna form this carbonine here and I'm uh, by the way I'm labeling the C13 uh, with a, uh, this red circle here uh, every step we go just to keep track of it because it is kinda hard to keep track of so what's gonna happen next so this is a cool step so this carbonine is actually gonna attack the second alpha uh, carbon and it's gonna kick off the bromine and so what you're going to form is something like this, and this is cool. So th these are two cyclopropanes, kind of a bicyclic compound. Um, and um, there's so much ring strain here, right? Because we know that cyclopropanes are not that stable. Even cyclobutanes are not that stable. Um, but cyclopropanes and cyclopropanones are not that stable anyways uh, as well. Um, and so let me just label a C13. And so you have your C13 here, right? And so what's the next step here? Um, so you still have your base in solution, right? Uh, since it's an excess. And so it's going to attack your ketone center, which is kind of here. Okay, and it's going to form a tetrahedral intermediate. Um, and so you're going to have your uh, your alkoxide uh, and your, uh, your um, ethanol group there. Um, now what's going to happen? Well, there's two things that's going to happen. First of all, remember we said that the ring strain uh, on the cyclopropene is pretty strong, right? So usually what happens when you collapse a tetrahedral intermediate is you don't break a carbon a carbon bond, right? Usually what happens is you uh, kick off the leaving group, which could be this group here. It could be an amide. It could be a... Uh, 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 an acyl halide, uh, whatever it is, it, usually that's what gets uh, kicked off. But in this case, that's not what happens. Uh, because of the ring strain, um, when when this tetrahedral intermediate collapses, um, it could do one of two things. It could either break this bond or break this bond, right? There's no difference between these two bonds. Even though there's a C13 label here, uh, chemically they're the same, right? Um, and so, uh, sorry, I think I chose the wrong size pen. Um, so um, let's say I'm going to draw two scenarios. Sorry, I'm going to draw two scenarios and I'm just going to erase something really quickly here. Um, one scenario is where this bond breaks and the other scenario is where the other bond breaks. Right? So let's draw the one with uh, where the uh, black arrow happens first. So if that happens, what's going to happen is you're going to form this compound here, and your 
ester group is going to be here and your C13 label is going to be right over there, right? That makes sense. Well, okay, that means that, oh, sorry, that's a bad circle. Uh, that means that the compound that we're going to get is actually this one here. Well, wait a second. Now, the keeners here are going to see what I mean. What, what if I break the other bond? What if I decide to go that way instead, right? Well, C13 label is actually going to end up on the other carbon. So, the ester is going to end up here. Right, and the C13 label is going to end up right beside the ester, which means you're going to get this compound. Well, what does that mean? Well, it means that, in fact, there's no preference for either compound. You're going to get a one-to-one -one ratio for both, uh, which is why I mentioned in the beginning it's a trick question. But this was an awesome question. Thank you very much, New, for sending this. I love this mechanism. Um, and if you're new to the channel, make sure to uh, like and subscribe to the video if you liked it. And if you have any questions, any organic chemistry questions at all, make sure to send it to the email in the link below. Uh, stay safe, wash your hands, and uh, I'll see you guys next time.